thank you for uh, joining me, everybody. Um, we're going to be talking about this um, this lovely film, Beautiful Something Left Behind. Um, my name is Vilga Ibiri. Uh, I am a writer for New York Magazine and Vulture. Um, this film is going to be available at uh, angelicaanywhere.com. And uh, to talk about how it was made and to talk about the issues around the film, um, I'm very pleased to be joined by um, the director of the film, uh, Katrine Philp, and um, the producer of the film, Katrina Salstrom. I guess maybe the best way to start our conversation is to just talk about, um, you know, how did you decide to make this film? Um, yeah, um, well, I've been thinking about this question because everyone is asking this question is also very exciting. I know that. <laughs> uh, and I think, um, I think uh, the seed for this film was planted some years ago, um, probably quite subconscious, I think. But it was, uh, yeah, some years ago when I was painfully close at losing my sister-in-law um, and I watched her struggling keeping herself alive and, and, and I watched um, my brother and uh, their three children um, by her side for a very long time. Um, luckily she survived but it left marks in the entire family and I, I think that my interest in um, exploring more about how children grief started here in this um, in the powerlessness I think and, and the love for my family um, and especially the children, of course, and um, and then I started researching, and it's been a long process. But uh, Katrina just then she she heard a, a podcast on uh, this uh, an episode on, on this American life, and I don't know, Katrina, maybe you'll continue a little bit from here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I guess that was in the research period where we looked at at, at different um, issues concerning grief, and then there was this episode on on this American life, which it was. Uh, just so extremely bold and it was uh, it was just one episode so it's like 20 minutes um, from from a, a place called the sharing place in Utah uh, which is sort of similar to the place where we ended up filming uh, where children come and and ha and and meet each other children who, are, who have lost a, um, a close relation and uh, we both Katrina and I were a mix of uh, of of shocked in a way and also just fell in love with this openness that they had this place where they were so uh so much not afraid to talk about death and the loss and and their grief um and i think that's at least where we started to to research directly on on places like this in the united states because we didn't we didn't feel we had similar places in denmark where we're from um, and then we started to reach out, for example, to this place in Utah, and they were very, very welcoming. But we, of course, also um, looked at other places, and and the, in the end, we we f we found uh, good grief um, in Morristown, and uh, and had a really good connection with Joe Primo, who's the CEO there, and. Uh, Katrina were invited over almost right away. I, I remember it as, as just two weeks after she was there doing the first research filming. But uh, yeah, at least it was very quickly <laughs> after that. Yeah, and, and, and I, was, uh, I was just amazed about the place and the open doors and, and that it was so, um, they just trusted us right away, I think. And um, and that was really, uh, yeah, it, it was a really special, the two first days filming there, I was just very uh, eager to continue. And I was very, um, I, I, I was sure that there was a film to be discovered there. So it, it happened very fast, I think. Um, and then we went back, we looked at the footage and, and then we just continued on and off, going back and forth to, um, to film. Uh, and, and, and Good Grief was amazing. They just, you know, they uh, helped us find the children and the families and no one, no one actually said no to us. So, so uh, yeah, it was a very open place to be, I think. Uh, and it's, it's always great uh, to meet people like that when you're 
doing documentaries, right? You you wanna you want the open doors and then you want the trust and um, yeah. So so yeah. But what what happened then uh, during the production actually um, was that my uh, my dad became sick and he he died. Um, at and I was you know I, I was very close to him. So um, um, the film in a way. Uh, suddenly also became my own journey into my grief. So while, while I was experiencing my own grief, I was experiencing the, the, the families and the children's grief as well, um, at good grief. So in a way the film just merged um, together and um, with my own private life and, and the film. Uh, and uh, so, so the film in a way also became a kind of therapy for me and the children's openness and the, and their ins was so amazing. It, it was so inspiring for me to feel their openness and, and uh, to, to, to feel that they were not afraid of talking about death or their emotions uh, and their loss. And I, I, I think I just realized that I wanted to capture, you know, all their wisdom in a way. Um, and I wanted to capture the, uh, the childhood uh, the feeling of childhood as well, the the feeling that I the the, the childhood that I also remembered, um, and um, yeah, and 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 they just show me how amazing and they you know they were so amazing and they were so resilient and you know they they showed me that life was also there to be lived despite of the the loss and the the the, the deep life crisis that they were in so. In a way, I think they also helped me, and I think that uh, I also realized that this film was much more about uh, life and existence and love and all the magical moments of, of childhood. So I really felt that this should be a, a tribute, tribute um, to our, you know, our brave children, and, and that we as adults actually can learn a lot from them. It's, you know, I, I... What, what you're saying really uh, resonates with what I was thinking while watching the film. I, I watched it again um, recently and, you know, it, it's interesting with filmmaking and with documentaries specifically, I think the more specific a subject matter is, sometimes the more universal it becomes. And, mm. you know, I mean, here's this very specific subject you're making. I mean, young children who've lost a family member who are in this, you know, who are, who are at this organization. Um, and yet while watching it, you realize, um, you know, when we, you know, no matter how old we are, when we lose a family member or somebody who's that close to us, um, we, we become children, you know, I mean, we, we revert back to, you know, what it would have felt like to be a very young child and to lose a parent, you know, and, and it, it feels, you know, you, you capture something really universal about grief, about that kind of grief in the film. Um, the, th the thing that, you know, when I first saw this film, um, it was that, uh, it was that uh, I was on the jury at the South by Southwest Film Festival where we gave this the documentary award. Um, and I can tell you that, you know, on the jury, we were all really impressed by not just the subject matter, but the filmmaking, the, 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 the style of the filmmaking, the way that you immersed us in the lives of these kids. You know, it would have been, I don't wanna say easy, um, but you could have gone the, the talking head route, given us a lot of context, that sort of thing. And that might've been a perfectly legitimate way to make the movie, but, you, but it seems like you chose a very specific way of making this film and of embedding us in the lives of these kids. Can you talk a little bit about that stylistic approach? Yeah, sure. Well, um, for me, making documentaries are always about collecting, I think, fragments of, of life. Um, and I think that's, for me, the beauty of it. Um, and with this film, um, we wanted to, we wanted it to, like, the structure to follow grief uh, and grief is not a linear process. It, it's grief is like somebody uh, said in the in the film, in the end of the film, that it's like waves. Um, and and we wanted 
we wanted that also in in the editing we didn't want any closures we didn't want you know we would, we didn't want to to um uh, we just wanted to follow the pace of the children um and i didn't want um a lot of experts telling us what to feel and what to see and the different stages of grief uh, uh, because I, I thought that the children was, you know, capable of showing us that uh, in a much better way. Um, and um, I also wanted to capture uh, the children's going in and out of emotions, like in one moment they could be f uh, really sad and in the next moment they could be really uh, uh, having a lot of fun. Um, so jumping from like sadness in one moment to happiness uh, in the next was something that we also worked on with, in, in the film. So it it we it was really interesting to work with the with the emotions um, like a tool to edit the film and to also to film the film. Um, and I also told my crew that I wanted them to use their gut feelings and their emotions when working on this film. It was so important for me. I didn't want them to like be intellectual or or use um, uh, or, or, or have this film created uh, in their minds. I wanted it to be very physical, and I, I wanted it to be created with their whole body and uh, with their feelings and emotions. Um, because for me, films is is also a very physical uh, thing, um, and and then. I think it helped also that I um, arrived to Good Grief um, with my family. Um, my husband is the cinematographer of the film and, uh, and we decided after I lost my dad, then we decided to, um, to, uh, to come and live close to uh, the children and the families mm -hmm. for, uh, and shooting the rest of the film. So we were, uh, we uh, went to, uh, we relocated to Morristown, New Jersey and our uh, daughter went to high school, our son went to kindergarten. Uh, so it was a kind of a family project, um, but it was very good. And I, I just, I, I needed to be close to the families. I needed to be there when they were like ready to be filmed and not when we were ready to travel over the Atlantic and, and film them. So, so, uh, and so I, I think all that combined, uh, and also the, the children, our children were on every sh shoot we, we made. They were just like playing behind the camera. Uh, and when the, we were not filming, they were playing with the kids. So <laughs> everyone become, became friends, I think, in a way. And, and um, so coming there as a family and not as a film crew, I think also helped like uh, open the doors for us. Um, and I have heard that um, some people think that uh, this film feels like a, a cathartic, cathartic journey in a way, like a healing journey to watch. And I'm really happy about that, really, because that was actually my hope um, that, uh, that, uh, that it, it would feel like this healing journey in a way, um, because, um, yeah. Um, I, I think I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to, as I said, didn't want to do like a closure to the children. Like I didn't want them to recover from grief uh, because grief is something that will always be there. And uh, that's not a problem at all. You know, it, it's like we have to realize that the uh, grief is there always. That's a, a companion for, for, for people who have lost and, and at good grief, you just they are there to learn to live with the loss and not to learn to push it away or to hide their feelings. And so, yeah. Um. This sounds, uh, now Katrina, the producer, I have a question for you because this sounds like, I mean, it sounds like a very complex production. I mean, you have the, the, the filmmaker relocating to New Jersey. Um, <laughs> You know, tell me about just the, the reality of putting something like this together. Because I think you were shooting for yeah. more than a year, right? 
Yeah, Katrina was shooting on and off for more than a year. Yeah, and I think Katrina and her husband and kids stayed in in Morristown for about about four months, which was uh, towards the end of the production. And yeah, surely there were some very complicated stuff uh, in production wise. Um, but I think, uh, but but I mean, Katrina is also, I, I guess, like most documentary filmmakers, so much hands on. So it's not like everything is is, sudden, is suddenly my responsibility. So she, I mean, she arranged for a lot herself. Um, and we have this amazing production assistant who was, uh, yeah, she took care of so much things, very uh, complicated things about the gas bill and, and so on in the United States, which was not easy. <laughs> but I mean, um, we are, I think, as as documentary filmmakers, we, we are very used to have to um, go with the flow in a way. I mean, so in, in that sense, it wasn't that complicated. Of course, we hadn't we hadn't got enough funding all the way, so we had to patch things together and we had to to decide to go on even without funding. Um, but that has, I mean, we've tried that before as well, and we really believed in this film, so we weren't that afraid about it. Um, but I think, um, yeah, as I said, we're used to having to to uh, to 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 film and to do those films as they happen because we cannot wait for for green light or for a certain something. Um, so in that sense, I think actually that the decision. Can Katrina and Adam, um, the cinematographer, took about moving there was just the perfect and right decision. And once they were there, it made things so much easier because, as Katrina said, we're dealing with people who are in a really um, tough time of their life, and 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 we couldn't we couldn't let our uh, flight schedule decide when we 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 should film them. It should be a much more organic process. Um, so I think it was a definitely the right thing to do. And so great that Katrina and Adam and the kids were up for that adventure. I think that's really brave and, and good. Yeah. When, when you guys say um, that you wanted to let, you know, the, the families and what they were going through dictate when you could shoot and things like that. On a practical level, how does that work? Um, I mean, are you there every day or do you set certain days or do they tell you in advance this might be a good day to come? How does, I'm curious about that. Yeah, well, as, as Katrina said, it's making documentaries is very organic and, and you, you want it to be uh, flexible, as fl flexible as possible. And, and we were at Good Grief filming, um, I think three nights a week. Mm -hmm. um, and then we naturally, met a lot of people there and we also met the families and we talked to them about okay what's your plans for the next week or two and how are you feeling at the moment uh, it would be a good time to to come next weekend uh, and we also i was also just like talking to them and arranging and and asking them i'm always as a filmmaker make, uh, working in with a very transparent process, I, I want to involve, you know, my um, participants in the film and in the making of the film. So I always discuss the scenes with them, and couldn't it be fun to do like this? Or so, like at Good Grief, it was very much following what was happening there uh, during the nights, and uh, like searching for the moments in this chaotic uh, <laughs> like with a lot of kids running around and they just find the small magical um, moments there uh, so Adam and I was very busy <laughs> also to you with the sound and everything because it was yeah um, really fun but we just had to follow but when we were with the families in in, in their homes and everywhere where we filmed them, uh, we could arrange the scenes and I could discuss with them uh, how, to, how, to, uh, how to capture the scenes and what I wanted in, in a scene and what we needed to, to like finish their story. Um, but uh, as Katrina said, they, they, are, they were all in a very vulnerable situation and, and, and therefore it was also one of uh, 
why I wanted to like uh, capture uh, six children instead of just one uh, because I, 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 I actually wanted to, to feel the different stages of grief. And I, and I knew that I couldn't do that because then we would film for, they are almost there for, I think three, four years, they are at good grief. So we couldn't do that. Uh, and, and, but what we could do was to film different children and look at grief from different perspectives. But I didn't want to put a huge amount of pressure on just one family and one child. So it was really nice that we had different uh, families and different children that we were filming on because then, you know, then we could film this week with this family and, and the other week with another family. So it was, yeah, like that. I, I it, for me, it was always very important that the film, that the, that the kids were not like, that they didn't want to be filmed or that was very important for me that they really, uh, that they wanted to be filmed and 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 it, it 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 was a good experience for them as well and be in the film and I think it was. I imagine. I mean, when you have, obviously, you have more than a year's worth of footage. You're filming multiple people over yeah. the course of this, you know, eventful period in their lives. Um, I imagine editing something like this is also incredibly challenging, both to kind of keep these emotional strands going without confusing us, but also not simplifying things too much because obviously you want the full complexity of this experience to come through. Tell me about editing this and how you went about doing that. Yeah, I, I'm, you know, I, I work very close with my editor, Sine Kaufman, uh, and we have been working together since film school. Um, and uh, we have a very dynamic process. We, uh, I go film, we go, I go edit, I share it with her. She's editing, I'm editing a little bit. So it's go like back and forth all the time. Uh, and it's very important for me to like build the film together with her and together with Katrina and together with cinematographer and the sound actually also and, and together with the whole crew building up this, uh, the, the structure of the film. And scene is really uh, like, uh, she's there from the beginning and, uh, and we discuss everything. So, uh, and we discuss what kind of scenes that we are missing. And uh, I, I, and of course we have filmed more than hundred hours of footage uh, as we usually do. It likes, um, but it was, this film was actually pretty easy to edit. And it's crazy to, to, you know, you are always struggling with editing and you edit for so long and the structure, it's like, it's in your head and you're just, trying to figure out how, how to do it. And, but this film, because we had this, like we just wanted it to be edited with your uh, emotions that we were always chasing uh, the, the sincere moments and, and the true moments. And then it was actually pretty easy. Hmm. So when you, when you move uh, it from here to, to down in your stomach and, 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 and you really feel your footage and the, the children, uh, then it's, 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 it, this was not that complicated because it was kind of pure in a way, I think. Uh, and it was really, uh, it has been amazing to do the entire process of the film, like from the beginning to the end. And it was not that long because some, sometimes you film for years and you edit for years and so the process gets so long this was very uh, in a way compressed or like um the the from the beginning to the end i don't know it was maybe only a couple of years uh, <laughs> maybe it's long for someone but not me uh, and and so therefore i all also felt very close to the footage because i've almost already you know i've all it was very uh, it was not very far away in a, a, from my um, uh, filming, so yeah. Yeah, and if I can say, I mean, I think as you said, also because you have such a good uh, dialogue with the editor, even on your shoot. I mean, while Katrina was in in uh, New Jersey, uh, uh, the last four months, she edited a lot and she shared it with the with the senior Kaufman and. So in a way, when Re Katrina returned from the United States, we were 
I mean, maybe I'm, I'm wrong. Maybe we were not at a rough cut, but still we had a really good idea about which scenes uh, were part of the film. Uh, so I agree it was a actually incredible easy film to, to edit this time. Joyful. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> so has, um, have you kept in touch with these families and with good grief or? Yes, yes, we, uh, we, we're still in touch and, uh, for, and you know, this year has been so crazy for everyone. And it started actually with South by Southwest where uh, we couldn't have our premiere there. And a lot of our, um, the families were going there and we were planning this amazing premiere with the, the children and audience and uh, yeah. So it was really, it has been really, really tough and it's been really hard not to watch the film together in a, in a theater or just together actually. So it has been, felt very, um, yeah, difficult actually. Um, and we're so happy that it's going out in theaters now, but it's still online. <laughs> and I desperately wanted to, to meet the audience and to like engage and to talk to them about the film. So we really miss that. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm, I really miss a proper premiere with the, the entire Good Grief and the families. And yeah, but we are in touch. Yeah. One of the reasons why I asked was because I'm also curious, you know, in terms of, I mean, look, you know, the way the pandemic shut down so much of life, you know, watching this film, you know, I, I saw it obviously at the start of the pandemic and watching it again now, I, I thought to myself, I mean, so much of what they're doing involves interaction and being close and being intimate. Um, do you know how Good Grief has, have they adjusted? How, are, how have they dealt with the pandemic? Um, because that seems like something that would really affect the work that they do. Yeah, well, to my knowledge, but maybe you know more, Katrina, but to my knowledge, they have moved it online to the extent that they have had to and uh, to the extent um, that they can. And I think that the groups meet there online, um, but I'm not aware of uh, of how, I mean, if, if, if New Jersey has had periods where they could actually meet, um, yeah. But uh, they are, of course, uh, trying to help as much as they can, uh, as always, uh, just in, in this new digital yeah. form. Yeah, it's sad because you think about, you know, the, I mean, so much of what we do, we can pause and kind of say, okay, we'll, we'll pick this back up. Mm -hmm. But, you know, these are young kids going through this, like, incredibly grueling emotional journey that doesn't stop. It's not going to pause because, you know, life stopped. Um, so it seems, you know, in a weird way, watching the film again, I thought to myself, this feels like, you know, it, it feels like another thing that that we're in danger of losing um, when we lose our ability to be together with 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 one another, you know. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I wanted to, um, you know, we talked a little bit about this, but. You know, maybe this can be our last question. Uh, how has making this film changed you? Um, you got into a little bit about it with, I mean, obviously you went through your own grief while during the process of making this film, but, um, you know, especially with documentaries, I feel like the process of making a film really, you know, changes the filmmaker as well. Um, I'm curious if you can talk about that a little bit. Mm. Well, this film, uh, well, it's, it's made just before the pandemic. And I think that now we are, um, I don't know, it, it, now we are so stressed and we are so sad and everyone is so confused. Um, and we feel this collective grief at the moment, this collectiveness. And I think this collectiveness is, is really good uh, I think it make a, makes us stronger that we are 
together. And what I what I learned at Good Grief was that there is this there is a community for people that are grieving, and and that you actually when you are in a crisis like that, that you really really need each other. And um, and and at Good Grief, they are there and they have each other to lean on, and it's so beautiful. I think, uh, and I think in Denmark, it's we are more maybe private with our grief um, that I experienced uh, at well at Good Grief, um, uh, and there's no places like that in in Denmark. It's it's more like. Uh, what we experienced at Good Grief was this hol holistic way of dealing with grief instead of just like in Denmark, it's more like um, conversation-based therapy um, and, uh, and, and that you deal with your grief more in the families yourself. And, and it can be very isolating and very uh, tough, I think. Um, and I think that I learned a lot from the children um, I have this uh, the end scene not to spoil anything but still like we filmed on a field with a lot of people uh, lighting lanterns and sending them up uh, in the sky and uh, I had this very strong like emotional feeling in my body it was almost like physical I think and I, I cried during this um, scene when we filmed it and everyone at this field did um, and uh, everything I think just came together in a very beautiful way and I think it was like it didn't it didn't it, it was not planned that this scene should be a release scene in the film but it was so magical there and the feeling of kind of I think loneliness combined with the feeling of being together as humans uh, in a way that's I think the same that people are experience, experiencing now with the pandemic, um, that uh, it, it, it just feels very right at this moment, very relevant. I think that's why the film is so relevant right now, because this feeling of loneliness combined with the feeling of being together as humans uh, that we really experience um, now, I think. Um, so I, definitely this film changed me also because it was, I was filming it in, in a very difficult period of my life as well, losing my dad myself. So it was like a roller coaster of a journey I've been on. Um, and the children were so amazing. And they can, you know, we can learn so much from them. And I've said that many times, but I really think that they are amazing. Well, I think, um, I mean, I think that that says it. I mean, that's what the movie is about, ultimately. Um, thank you both, uh, Katrina and Katrina. Um, best of luck with the film. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very excited to see it finally come out into the world after having waited months and months after first seeing it. Um, and I really do hope people connect with it. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks.